Hey everybody, Jessica here from Quantum Fitness and I am in the kitchen today doing a live demonstration to help you understand a little bit better how you manifest your own reality and why sometimes you're still getting less than exactly what you want uh, from the idea of that you're actually manifesting from three different points of view right? And that would make sense because your life is a little bit of a contradiction. Well, I'm about to explain to you why. In my teachings, I explain that there is the me, myself, and I. Although there's four levels of consciousness, we're going to keep it simple. And we're going to talk about the three levels right now that are really interacting in your reality to help facilitate what it is you're manifesting here. And that idea is the me, myself, and I. The me, myself, and I kind of like, you know, mind, body, soul, but this reference, a little simpler, all right? The idea of the me is the my ego, right? It is the part of you that still feels devalued, a little worthless, um, critical, judgmental, jealous, um, you know, it doesn't feel seen, it doesn't feel heard, doesn't feel safe, you know, it doesn't feel understood, it feels alone, even when it's surrounded by people, places, and things, it's never enough. And this is a byproduct of the underdeveloped level of consciousness within you, all right? And that happens from pain, trauma, and separation at an early age of, of you know, just having to be, you know, here and, and accepted. And that's how we build our ego identity. And that is, in our representation, our scientific demonstration today, ice, okay? That's been melting. So, in our, our little... Um, our little example here, ice would be the the idea of our ego. And ice is cold, right? It's it's very solid. If you you know touch it, you can stick to it. And it is um it, it is in a shape. It is hardened in a shape, which means that the it believes that it's a dinosaur and therefore it's holding the shape of this dinosaur. It's holding a teddy bear because it believes it's a teddy bear. You know, there's a star, it's a star. No one can tell it different. It is what it is and what it is. It, it tells the story of that. It vibrates as that. It lives as that. Although maybe secretly the star wants to be the dinosaur and the dinosaur wants to be the, you know, um, the teddy bear. It, it literally holds on to the identity and the personality construct of itself because that's how it feels safe. I know who I am. I know who I am. Very hardened, very, very solid, right? And, and, and can, can hurt you. Right, if he falls on your foot, it's heavy, it's heavier, it's denser than let's say water. And this would be the idea of our inner child, okay? Or our, or our myself part of that equation. The myself is what houses like the idea of the, the you know, the, the one that wants the adventure, that wants things that don't make sense, like get your head out of the clouds, your imagination, right? And this is your malleability. Now this is why children are so influential when they're young because they're in that state right we call this theta but this is technically like for our example the malleability of consciousness which means whatever shape water is in it will take so right now it's in the shape of this you know of this guy and if i put it in a teacup it will become the teacup and this is why kids are are so influential when they are younger because they're just they're flowing, they're flowing, they're being, you know, right now I'm being the teacup, over here I'm being, a, you know, the dinosaur, and over there I'm being a star, but I can change my mind because I'm water. I'm very vulnerable, but I'm also very powerful and gentle, and I am everywhere, right? Um, I can flow, I can, you know, unless I get trapped or cold, right? And if I get cold, I harden, right? And that be, I, I become more bitter, like in my thinking and very, um, this is who I am versus, well, what do I want to be? And I kind of lose choice when I become the ice. And the third element of our consciousness that we're working with to manifest our reality is what you see behind me, which is steam, right? Got some water boiling over there. Steam would be the gas part of our equation here. So we've got, we've got a solid, we've got a liquid, and we've got steam. So the steam would be the idea of spirit within you. It would be the idea of your super consciousness or your higher self. And that would be the part of you that is, is the particles. It's like the infinite possibilities. It's like you get to be everything and nothing. You get to, you know, uh, be, you know, um, not so rigid or even have to flow. You're just everything. And the cool thing about it is it's like, you know, you've heard, oh, my grandpa came and saw me. He passed over, you know, 10 years ago. And he came and saw me and he saw my sister in the same week. How's that possible? 
because it's a particle, right? Because it's like, I can be everywhere at the same time. I don't have to be with the water. I don't have to be in the ice. So as we move up into higher consciousness, we become more uh, free and abundant, right? Because abundant is the particle and freedom would be the ability to flow that which we're desiring. Now, if I'm stuck in the ice place because of pain, trauma, nervous system's all frozen up, you know, body's in pain, I'm locked into this, even though I may want something different, I don't know how to do that. And when I'm like this, this terrifies me because there's no success here. There's no value apparent here. There's like, well, I'm just water. Like I'm just taking whatever shape. But this is where all of our choice and magic is, is in when we're manifesting. And, and this is where we don't feel comfortable being because this has never really gotten us um, ahead. Like it, it doesn't feel like it gets us love when we're playing and in the nonsense. It's like, we have to be productive. I have to know who I am. I have to know what I am if I'm gonna have value, but then when you're like that, you're you're going, something's missing because I'm a creator and I'm here to choose and flow, right? And be whatever I'm choosing to be. Malleable, right? Changeable, teachable, coachable, okay? That would be the water. Ice, okay? This is my sessions every day, <laughs> okay? And, and break up that personality identification that is holding you back from expanding. So what we do, we don't like to be the ice per se, but we don't feel safe as the water because there's no security there. There's no true like abundance like given to us because we're just taking the shape. This is where we've been hurt because we've been very easily influenced, okay? What we usually do is we jump over to the steam factor from the ice. We bypass the play completely and we jump into a meditation. We're like, woo, we're expanded. We're like, wow, DMT is running through my, you know, my body. And I'm like, I'm spirit. Okay. And that feels amazing to be connected with what you really are until you have to come downstairs and face a sink of dishes. Okay. And then you're like, Where's my particles? Now I'm the ice. Now I'm the grumpy mom. Now I'm resentful. Now I'm frustrated, right? Now I'm like, I'm humiliated because no one cares about me and sees me. And so then I'm like, well, why not wait, wait till everyone leaves so I can go back to meditation and be the steam. But see, this is so far of a quantum leap, you guys, that when we're doing this, we're actually hurting the physical body more and we're hurting the inner child more. And the reason why is because the hormonal spike, okay? This is a stress response that your nervous system is going to get all jacked up and locked up. This is like inflammation. This is like all kinds of pain. This is like suffering, but I don't know how to not be the suffering because when I'm water, I don't feel safe, right? I only feel safe if I'm over there, but I can't sustain that because I can't, that's too big of a quantum leap. So, right? What we do is we go high, low, high, low, high, low. We like oxytocin, right? And all adrenaline and stress and everything. And then we're like flatlining and then we're like needing sugar for dopamine. And, and this right here, this frozen ice, like I don't want to necessarily be who I am, but I'm scared to be anything else. And then running over there is what creates a, a very big destruction in the physical body. And you've noticed if like pressure happens with weather, you guys, come on, there's like tornadoes. It's like extreme highs, extreme lows create huge storms, all right? So we have to look at this. What would be the balance point, the middle, you know, the middle of the bridge here? What is the hybrid of the darkest part of you and the lightest part of you? It would be the water, the malleability, the, the one that can take shape, to take color, take flavor and become. And when it gets to choose, it gets to be whatever it wants, not what it has to be. Because we're afraid to be this because we were programmed when we were like this before. But see, now we're not. We're older. We got a little money. We got a little time. We got a little say so, right? Now we can be the water again where we can create our own reality from a malleability place. And it happens very fast because the flow of the universe is literally as fast as a roaring river. And it's all said, yes, 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 yes. Abundance is yes, 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 yes. It's water, 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 right? It's all malleability. So when we're stuck with the ice, we want to be the water, but it's not safe for us to play because it's nonsense and it doesn't pay our bills. Then we go over there to just get some relief. 
right? Or something that feels like that. You know, sometimes you don't do the meditation that feels like steam. Sometimes you, you don't have a person or place or a thing that you're using to make you feel that, that way, give you those good drugs. And then we have to go back to the ice when the dishes are in the sink, okay? And this is where we lose our joy and lose our happiness, but we get lost kind of in that spirit space. And where we wanna be is where the nonsense is, right? Okay, so this is where the, this is where the magic happens. This is where your, your true intuition is, 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 you know, in your body, is in your inner child knowing, hey, I can go to the darkest places and the lightest lights, but these two, they can't live together. They're too high and too low of vibration to intersect. So this is what intersects the highest and the lowest part of you. This is where we are going to use in our manifestations instead of trying to change what we are from ice or high in the heavens, we're going to become like water, like Bruce Lee says, flow like water, right? In this way, we can slowly melt the ice because what's the fastest way to melt ice is boiling water, okay? Let's think about that metaphor. When do things really change for us, right? When we're in boiling, boiling water. When do we really have big dark night of the soul, impacts, accidents, manifest really bad things, we're in hot water because, right? Spirit is like, hey, you said you wanna be over here with me? I'm hot water. So if I pour myself on your ice, you're, you're gonna lose your security, your job, your relationship. So you gotta watch what you ask for, all right? Because that's the fastest way. Now, a lot of us are holding it in, holding in and carrying weight of the past, where our, our ice is getting heavier, and, and the inner child's like, man, am I ever gonna get a chance to like, you know, play? Because every time I get too close to you, I freeze. And now I have to become the shape of you. And we call this quantum entanglement because now I am too cold to be by myself and be malleable. And when I get too close to you, I become ice and that entangles me to you. And now I lose my freedom, my malleability, my joy because of your shape. And you're cold, so if I get too close to you, I'm going to become cold, right? If I become too close to spirit, I'm going to become particle. So governing our own space is very important. So what do we use when all three are in a contradiction of themselves and they don't know how to live in the flow of peace with each other? We get a little salty, okay? A little uh, salt and pepper, right? Because this is how I roll in my house, a little salt and pepper. And um, we throw salt, don't we? And this is jealousy, envy, this is gossip, this is judgment. Because this is the only way that we know how to throw a little salt in that ice to break up. Because this is another way to melt ice is salt. And I would say some of you need to be more salty because some of you are too sweet. Like, too kind, too empathic, no boundaries, right? Every time you get close to ice, you're like, I wanna save you. Oh shoot, now I become ice. Darn it, I was trying to save you and I became ice. And then you're like, what do I have? And your child's like, we got salt, salt and pepper, right? So that's what we use. So this is what we're using instead of just going, I can be safe to be water and I can play because there's two frequencies that balance you into this family unit. You don't, you don't even need an intervention, okay? That is the idea of play. Play is when the ice says, well, okay, I am a star and I guess I, I, have, to, I have to know that I'm a star, but I could pretend to be a dinosaur. And the pretending is like warmer water now and it's gentle and it's organic and it's the right process to heal our separation because we were one and then we got our family dynamic. Don't do that. Don't say that. Don't feel that. Don't think that. And we're like, oh, so we created ice around mom and dad's idea of acceptance. Didn't like the way we looked, but didn't have a choice to change it. Then we try to hide it. We try to get other people's ice to make ourselves look like them. We try to bring people into our ice so we're not alone. And then we kind of wake up and we start to go in that water place again. But then what we do is we go too close to the steam and we lose ourselves. but then have to go back and live in a house of ice and we feel like we're going crazy. So hopefully this is making sense, All right? So we've got the ice, which is the me, is my ego, is I am, right? I'm stubborn, set in my ways. 
I got water. I just want to play, be, have, change my mind, change my heart, you know, love everybody, right? I want to be with everybody. And then we got steam that's like, I'm everything. So I'm good. I can be everything. Solid, water, steam, okay? Chemical, emotional, physical, me, myself, and I. And our secret here is play and celebrate. Break the cell. Break, break up the ice. It's the best thing for you to not know who you are sometimes. It is the best thing for those hot water events that you get yourself into because it's that when you turn back into water and it may terrify you because there's no certainty, there's no structure, there's no identity, and this is where all of your magic returns. So, me, myself, and I is be like water, okay? And when we want to be steamed to go into the higher realms to remember more aspects of ourselves, we can do that, but it won't be such a quantum leap that's going to destroy your hormonal system when you're trying to really wake up and heal from the past. The solution is not over-processing its spirit. It is play. It is, it is um, being so bored that you have to make something out of nothing. You know, it's like, oh, it's raining outside. Let's build a fort because that is the way that that star and dinosaur and teddy bear can then pretend to be anything it wants. And it starts to lighten up naturally. And this is how we're also going to heal our hormonal system, heal our bodies, bring back the joy of life because this extreme is just, it's, it's just too destructive for your physicality and it's aging you very quickly because when you're in meditation, you're in gamma or theta, which is a high, high, high vibration, your aging process slows way down, but then you come back into beta and it speeds back up. So it's like they say, you know, preheating an oven will cook it the right way, but if you have a cold oven, things aren't gonna cook right. So when you're too cold and you're too hot, you're too extreme and you're actually breaking yourself up more and more and more than just playing, pretending, right? Allowing, flowing and chilling out. So you don't have to get too salty, but this is your secret weapon. Sometimes you need to get a little boundary. You need to say, uh-uh, I'll throw salt on you. You get too close to me, ice, because I got some, a little pepper too, okay? And this is the idea of how we're manifesting because when we are separate like this, we are manifesting separately. I'm manifesting from I can't be what, you know, I can't have what I want because I'm stuck here. I'm trapped, I'm locked, I'm cold, I'm alone. I'm, you know, here, I'm unstructured, I'm, I, I'm unwitnessed, no one's taking care of me, no one loves me. And then over there, I'm like, I'm everything, so I'm good. So too big of a contradiction keeps you idle. It keeps you waiting. It keeps you waiting because you're solid and you need to lighten up. It's okay for you to not be a dinosaur today. Be something else, all right? And in that way, if you practice being more malleable, then you become the creator of your own reality instead of the default creator of what you are around because you will attract ice when you are ice and ice will be attracted to you even though it may have a different shape. All right, thank you guys for joining me and I'll see you in quantum fitness.